I got a couple of blobs. These are blobs of clay. These clays have inertia. Right now they're at rest. They tend to stay at rest. I put this clay on the top of my head like this, and I can see this one very clearly. But you know what, gang? I can't see this one back here. How can I see that one without touching? So if you turn around, <laughs> that neat, see? things tend to stay put. You ever do that? You got a bowl of soup, right? And you got the alphabet and you want this alphabet over here near you. So you turn the soup bowl and what happens? <laughs> the alphabet stays there. You keep turning the soup bowl. Inertia. Things at rest tend to stay at rest. And what do we have down here, gang? We have some plates. No staples, no Velcro the tablecloth. This is what I want you to do over the weekend when you get invited to dinner at someone else's house, okay? What you do is they say, hey, what are you learning at the university? Say, so I'll tell you what I've been learning at the university, okay? And get the table all set, grab the tablecloth like this and say, you believe in the first law of inertia? And they say, yes, we do. Hey, how about that? Here's a ball. Hold it up here. And the ball is hanging. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this string. Bam, bam, bam. Harder, 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 harder. Until either this string or the string is going to break. Which one do you think will break? I'm pulling that down. Don't I exert extension in the string? Doesn't the string get tight? Huh? Fine, huh? Doesn't this one get tight too? And so I have a tension here. I also have a tension here. The string is stretched out. So as I pull gradually, 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 which one's going to break again? Top or bottom? I'm going to say the top because I got another string here for the next trial. Let's watch this. Was the top. Because of the weight of the ball or because of the inertia of the ball? Check your neighbor and see if your neighbor sees which of the two properties, weight or inertia, made the top string break. Go. Why did the top string break? Because the weight of the ball is acting up here, too. So the weight of the ball pulls on the top. The weight doesn't act on the bottom string. So I've got the weight of the ball pulling on the top string and the tension with which I pull on the top string. Both these, quick, boom, it breaks. But how about now I take... And I take the string and I whip it down quickly like that. Why did the bottom string break? Because of the inertia of the ball or because of the weight of the ball? Check your neighbor. I can show you that with this elastic gang. This elastic. If I pull, 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 I can pull. Look, look how much that thing's stretching. Okay, but let's suppose I just go like this. Notice that? There was not as much force up here. The elastic didn't stretch as much when I pull quickly. That force was not transmitted up here. The inertia of that ball, it wants to sit right there, huh? and I pull, it stays right there. Another word for inertia is lazy. It, the ball is lazy. It tends to stay doing what it's doing. Get that knee? This has got a lot of mass gain. To say it's got a lot of mass, to say it's got a lot of tendency to stay right where it is. Okay, I'm going to lay on here. Would you put the anvil right on my stomach, please? Right on my chest. Okay, right here. Okay. Now, would you get on the other side and slam that thing as hard as you can? Over here, too. Oh, don't, please don't miss the anvil. <laughs> Do you have any grudges against your teachers? <laughs> Hit it harder. We talk about forces. We're going to talk about forces, not in terms of pounds, gang, but in terms of newtons. Here's a newton scale. Here's a kilogram. I'm going to weigh the kilogram. And the kilogram has a weight gravitational pull of almost 10 newtons. Want to get strict? 9.8. But we can say 10 newtons. So one kilogram weighs 
10 newtons, 10 newtons of gravity force. You show me a system that's accelerating. And by that, I mean a system that's changing its speed, okay? Some system that's doing this. It's got a change in velocity over some particular time t. Anything that's changing. You show me a system that's changing how it's moving, and I'll show you a system that must have an unbalanced net force. In chapter two, we said this what is what acceleration is. Acceleration is a change in velocity with respect to time. That's what it is. Acceleration is change. It's change how you move. Now we're saying how you get it, how you produce it. And we're saying now you produce an acceleration by pushing on something, by applying some net force. But how much acceleration depends upon the amount of matter. This idea is Newton's second law of motion. Well, let's suppose you asked a little kid who's very, very bright, but ignorant, never seen it before. And you say, kid, I'm going to drop these two objects. You tell me which one hits the ground first. I'll give you a Hershey bar. Kid says, with almonds? Yeah, with almonds too, all right? I'm going to, you tell me which one hit the ground first. And the kid says, well, can I feel those things first? You say, yeah. The kid take this. He says, hmm, it's a pretty heavy piece of metal there. It's aluminum, but there's enough of it. So it's, it's kind of heavy. Big gravity force acting on that. It takes this. Oh, it's not a tinky ball. See, it's not very heavy at all. It's very, very light. Yeah, it doesn't weigh anything. Come on, kid, which one hits the ground first? Says, well, obviously, the heavy metal is going to hit the ground before this little red ball. You say, how come? I don't want it's more force acting on it. I know when I'm pulling my toys, if I if I pull with a big force, it got a big change in motion. If I pull with a little force, only change a little bit. There's more force, more gravity force acting than this. Quick, boom, gonna hit the ground. Give me my Hershey bar. <laughs> then you take it and you drop these things. The kids say, da, da, da. they fall together. Kid doesn't get the Hershey bar. You know what that kid is saying? That kid is saying this: that the acceleration, the change in motion, is directly proportional to the force. I got a question for you. Is that kid correct or incorrect? incorrect. You give it a C. It's correct. His thinking is, is, is fine. But you know what? The experiment doesn't line up with his thinking. One of the beauties of science, we can experiment to see if our thinking is complete. Let's suppose you ask some other kid. I know they live in a different part of the island. You ask the kid the same question. Hey kid, which one gonna hit the ground first? The little dinky ball with a heavy weight, huh? And the kids say, can I feel him? And this kid thinks differently somehow. Instead of judging how heavy, what the kid does, he goes like this. Wow, it's pretty hard to change the state of motion of that. Got a lot of resistance to change. Kid takes this. Oh, this little thing here, my gosh, easy to change the state of motion of that. This doesn't have as very much mass. This has a lot more mass. Yeah. This has a lot more inertia. Yeah, come on, kid. Which one hit the ground first? Yeah, well, this thing here got so much inertia that, of course, the little red ball going to hit first. Is it the red ball hit first? Yeah. By the time this thing gets around to responding to gravity, whoop, this thing be already down there. Because I know when I'm pulling things, I pull something very light. Boom, pull something heavy, I lag behind. This thing is being a lot going to lag behind. So the kid says the little ball wins. So you drop the two things, the beauty of your experiment. The kid, what's wrong? You know what that kid's saying? Is that kid saying something like this? On your, on your toes. Is that kid saying the acceleration is proportional to the amount of mass? Check your neighbor. First of all, I got to ask you guys all a number, uh, question. Which number is bigger? How many say, oh, obviously this number is bigger. Show of hands. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out. Oh. No, 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 no. Okay. no, this is the bigger number, right? Okay. So it turns out that, hey, as the mass gets bigger and bigger, what's the acceleration get? Less and less. So it's this way. This is called an inverse relationship. Make something big, this gets small. Make this small, this gets big. It's upside down. It's inverse. So what the kid is saying is the more massive the less the acceleration. See, if I wrote it like this, 
Now the kid is saying, the more massive, the more it will accelerate. No, 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 no. He's not saying that. He's saying the opposite. He's saying the inverse. He's saying this. But you know what? He's incomplete. And this kid, incomplete. Now get these kids together. Get them together. And you talk about some nice physics. Because when you get them together, what do you got? You got what Newton got. You got this right here. Yes, the force. Yes, the inverse mass. Here's the whole thing. Right here. Yeah. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the force acting on this. Here's the force acting on this. Looks like this one's going to be winning again. Huh, let me let me caution you on something. Whenever I ask you to compare the accelerations of different things, acceleration, don't shoot from the hip. Use a crutch. And that crutch is Newton's second law. When I say which of these accelerates more, it's another way of saying which goes faster, which gets down to the ground first, huh? Which accelerates more? Use the equation to guide your thinking. Because the acceleration depends not only on the force, but on the what? And what's the mass of this thing here? The mass of this thing here is like this. What's the mass of the little dinky thing here? Almost nothing. It's got a mass like this. So are the masses the same? Are the forces the same? Are the ratios of force to mass the same? Do you see that's different? The ratio of both are the same. And that ratio is the acceleration. I'm going to pull this block along the table. And I'm going to pull it so it has no acceleration. Let's see if I can do that. Steady, steady, steady. What was the scale rating when I pulled it? Let me try it again. I'm pulling against friction, isn't that true? There's friction here. I'm gonna, it takes a lot to get started. But once I get it going, steady, steady. What was the force when it was going? Three newtons. About three? Three newtons is registered, right? Do you know there are people who could watch that and see that it's moving with no acceleration? And they know enough physics, they can say, hey, you know what? I can calculate in my head what the friction force must have been that you were pulling against. And there are people that can't make those calculations, but there are people who can. And all they say is, honey, when you were pulling, it took three newtons to keep it going. I can tell you how much the friction was, so long as it didn't accelerate. See if you're sitting next to someone who can do such a thing in their head. Go. If when I pull that, I got three newtons. There's three newtons pulling it this way. <clears throat> Do you guys know anyone who can calculate what the friction must be? Aren't you sitting next to someone? What's the person next to you say? How many newtons of friction? Three. How many say three? Yay, most everybody. That's right. Let's take the easiest case. We have a couple of parachutes, Coney Island style, that are both open and. Uh, I don't think this one's going to quite fit in the class period, but how about a bed of nails? Let's show, by the way, it's Apple. <laughs> and these as well? These are sharp nails, gang. Okay. About an, about an inch apart. You don't know what an inch is. Think about 2.54 centimeters. About 2.54 centimeters apart. All right. And Paul is going to. Uh, you sure these are Teflon coated? No, these are these are the real thing, honey. <laughs> you know why we don't do it the other way around? That's a good question. This really is dangerous. And Paul's a little more foolish than I is. <laughs> no, 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 no. Paul's got more area. Paul's got more area, right? So for some force distributed over more area, that'd be less pressure. Right? So a little safer. Yeah, you guys protect yourself. Protect yourself. 
Monday.